We just got off the water. I'm going to show you these fish. I'm going to show you how to clean them. And then tomorrow, which I'll include on, in this video, we're going to do a cook. And I'll show you how I cook my fish um, uh, for dinner. I'm going to just show you for somebody that doesn't know how to clean fish, but you've seen 100 videos on how to clean fish over here. I'm going to clean these four, uh, get the fillets ready. I'll tap them nice and dry, and I'll put them in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, we're going to cook them up just for you guys. Go, babies, go! Sixteen inches. That is enough. All right. Well, it took a while, but I finally got a dang fish today. We're almost ready to go home. Listen to the sound. Let's get the fillets going. So this is a speckled trout and these are Spanish mackerel. These three right here and then we have the speckled trout. So um, that's a good sized trout. I haven't caught one like that in a while. So pretty nice. Okay so we're just going to set these aside. Right now we're going to clean them up one at a time. All right so I have my handy dandy fillet knife that I use. All right, so what we do is we just take it from behind the head, cut around kind of like where the, around where the belly would be. Take your fillet knife, go down to where you hear the ribs. You can feel the ribs on the knife and just run it right down the back. I'm gonna flip it over and take the meat off the skin. Now, this has got pretty tough skin, but if you have a really super sharp knife, you could cut through the skin, so keep your Keep your knife as flat as possible. There you go. There's a nice fillet. Do that. We'll get the other side and then we're going to get the pin bones out. Same thing. Come up to the head. Bend the knife down till you feel the rib cage bones and the backbone. And then you're just going to cut them all the way down to the tail. Flip it over, start from here, lay your knife flat, parallel with the cutting board. Oop, that one got away from me. The skin's on there a little bit, but we'll fix that. Okay. Now this I'm just going to put in the sink for now. So I'm going to save all these carcasses. Um, Put them in a bag and freeze them. That's going to be for my crab traps. So right in here on this line, from right here at the beginning, it was started behind the head to about, I don't know, three or four inches, two inches, depending on the size of the fish. There's pin bones, what they call. So that little red line, you want to cut on each side of that red line all the way down. And just pick that up. You can peel it and then just cut it off right there. Now, that's 100% boneless. Just what got the belly. You might have a little bit of uh, like white cartilage there you might want to cut off. So there you go, a nice fillet. I got a little bit of skin on there. Skin ain't gonna hurt you, you can eat it if you want to. I just don't particularly like it. And also, is the more of the red bloodline that you can get off the fish, the better the fish is going to taste. So we're just going to take most of that off. Don't worry about if you can't get, get it all off, okay? I'm going to leave that a little bit on because I don't really don't want to ruin the meat. This one here we can just take off like that. Okay, and then 
there again we're going to turn it around and cut your pin bones out you get a little bit of belly um, cartilage on there will cut out and then you take your pin bones again down each side just cut a little slice there we go <clears throat> there you go another another nice fillet now mackerel have a, a tendency to be oily Spanish mackerel are not like king mackerel king mackerel are very oily they have a very fishy taste if you do what I'm doing here and you so like when I get my fish when I first catch them if you'll see I cut their throat which cuts their gills and it bleeds they get all the blood out that and between getting the bloodline that you can out those two things prevent it from tasting fishy okay there you go speckled trout now we'll see it's summertime it's warm a lot of times these fish have little worms in them which you can just cut them out of the meat if they do we're gonna see this is my first trout for this year that I've caught so I don't know Ah, beautiful fillets, no worms. Yeah, she's nice. So there again, just like the mackerel, you clean it from the head. You wanna go up to the head as far as you can so you don't lose all that meat. Go down to the backbone and just run it down the backbone. Just as simple as that. And save your carcass for the crab traps. All right, guys. Well, that's how you fillet them. Um, I'm going to come back with you tomorrow when we're going to get ready to cook these. And we'll finish our uh, catch and cook. So I'll see you back tomorrow for dinner. Okay, guys. Welcome to the kitchen. Uh, after the catch, we're going to have cooked some fish up tonight and a side dish. And I'm going to show you how to put it all together. You should have just watched a video of how I cleaned the fish. Now we're back in the kitchen. And we're going to make uh, fish sandwiches with some small rolls. Uh, we're going to blacken the fish with uh, some black seasoning on the grill with a hot skillet. We're going to do some potato salad. And I'm going to show you how to put all that together. So first of all, we're going to start. I'm going to show you what we have for potato salad. I'm going to show you how I make mine. Uh, I have eggs. Our potatoes. We're going to chunk the potatoes up. Okay, so I started a pot of water. And what we're going to do is... With this batch that I'm making right now, I use six eggs and we're going to hard boil them. We're going to put them in with the potatoes so they all cook at one time. We're going to add a little bit of kosher salt. Okay. And we're going to let that come to a boil. Meanwhile, I'm going to cut up the potatoes to get in there. Now I've already washed them. So I'm just going to cut them up into bite-sized pieces, which you would Cut them in any way you want them, any size pieces you want. All right, um, so I don't bore you. I'm gonna cut up the rest of the potatoes and then I'll get back with you. Okay guys, got the potatoes all cut up, as you can see in the bowl. Uh, and I like using the red skin potatoes for, for my potato salad. You can, use Yukon Gold, um, you can use white potatoes, use whatever you want, it's up to you, entirely up to you. So, <clears throat> and then I have the eggs cooking already, they're warming up in there, and we're going to cook it all together. And then as soon as the potatoes are done, I put it in an ice bath. So I'll fill this bowl up with ice water uh, that the potatoes are in now, and as soon as everything's done on the stove and they're to the fork tender that I want them, I drain them and then I put them into the ice water bath which will eliminate the cooking process and stop it and then it also chill the potatoes so you can have potato cold potato salad uh, for dinner okay guys here's my ice bath like I said I drained the potatoes now I'm just gonna put them in this ice bath here and that will stop the cooking process put some cold water in here to fill it up all right, guys, and then I just put some ice on top.
and we'll let those cool off. We'll drain them again and then put them in the bowl for mixing. When this cools down, I'll show you how to make it. Right now we're gonna get ready for the fish. All right, so I was hoping to do this a little earlier in the day than it is happening, but uh, it's getting dark outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and cook the fish inside today just so you can have a better light to see it. So we're gonna get ready for the fish. I like using uh, Chef Paul's uh, blackened seasoning. It's called blackened redfish magic. That's what I use on my fish. I do have a recipe to make my own blackened, but uh, just time-wise, we're gonna do this tonight. After I cleaned my fish yesterday, I wash it real good, and then I wrap it up in paper towel and I put it in the refrigerator. I tap it dry, wrap it up in paper towel, because I like my fish to be dry um, on the outside, on the inside, in order to put the seasoning on. So all my fish is wrapped up in here. There's the fillets we showed you this yesterday. I showed you this earlier when we cleaned the fish. This is actually, I cleaned them yesterday. This is the next day. Nice and dry. They're very firm, uh, cold. Remember this is Spanish mackerel and a speckled trout that we have tonight. All right, so there's all the fillets. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a paper plate and I'm gonna sprinkle. I'm just gonna sprinkle that actually, it's coming out too slow. I'm just gonna take the cover off and just pour some on there. Ooh, gosh. I thought, I'm almost out of that. Oh, we might have to make a different, a couple different ways tonight. Thought I had more seasoning than that. Okay, so anyway, we're going to take, these are nice trout fillets, and we're going to just take it, and we're going to coat it on both sides. Just like that, and then we're going to put it on another paper plate. This is a piece of mackerel. All right, I'm gonna have to see if I have any more Cajun seasoning up there. This is a bomber. All right, get that other piece of trout. This is totally like being unprepared. <laughs> but anyway, you get the you get the drift. You can do all this here. Um, I can just do once I do these in the pan. There's be enough seasoning in the pan. I can cook the rest of the fish. It won't be as much coating on there, but it'll cook it just fine. Okay, that's the seasonings. Both sides of the fish you want to make sure you get. And then these fish here, we're just going to put, we're going to fry in the second batch. All right, put that aside and I'm see how the potato salad's coming and show you how to put that together. Okay guys, so I put the potatoes in here, they're drained. I got six eggs, I already peeled them so make it faster. And we're going to just chop up the six eggs into the potato salad. You don't like eggs? Don't put eggs in. This is more like of a German, German potato salad. Alrighty, and I'm just showing you, I don't chop them up too fine. Just take a knife and uh, just go around, chop it. If you want it finer, you can do finer. All right, I'm gonna finish these up and then we'll get to the next step. Pretty simple, salt, pepper, Hellman's mayonnaise, and I use yellow mustard any brand. Uh, I like Hellman's mayonnaise. I've tried Duke's. I've tried all the others. I don't care for them. Uh, so we do uh, Hellman's. They don't sponsor me. It's just something I've used all my life is uh, Hellman's. So I don't have any um, like ingredient measurements of this. 
I usually just start off with mayonnaise. I put like two and a half scoops of mayonnaise and then the yellow mustard. I just kind of squeeze it put a little bit in there. If I had to say how much, maybe um, a tablespoon of mustard and then salt and pepper, black pepper. Um, it's not real fine, but it's not coarse either. And this is just a taste. You can change this recipe um, whichever way you want it. I just put a little bit of salt in the beginning because the, um, the mayonnaise has salt in it. It's kind of salty. so, And then just mix it up. Now some people do like even dill in their potato salad. We like it just like this. It's pr pretty plain, simple. And um, Peggy never ate potato salad until she ate mine and now that's all she wants is my potato salad. So, but yeah, it's pretty simple to make and uh, tastes really good. And that's pretty much it. Let's give it a taste and see what it does. Hmm. It's perfect. Okay, we're going to put that in the refrigerator to chill. Next is the fish. Okay, guys, I just wanted to show you the rolls we're going to be putting it on. Now, we're not toasting it or anything. These are fresh rolls. Uh, when we were at uh, Sam's the other day, we picked up a whole bag of them. We divide them up for enough for us for dinner, and then we freeze them in packages of four. Here's the rolls we're using. Just small mini rolls. We'll cut them in half. Tomato, lettuce, the sauce we made, and the fish. And then along with potato salad, you can't beat it. It's a great dinner. Okay, let's uh, go over to the um, pan, show you for the fish. When you're doing blackened fish, blackened steak, blackened anything, I always use a cast iron pan. Okay, so we're going to heat it up. We're going to heat it on a medium heat right now. Okay, we got it on a medium heat. We're going to put some olive oil in here. Okay, and then we're going to start off with a half a stick of butter once that gets a little warm. And then I just cut my butter up into like slices, quarter, quarter inch thick slices, do the half a stick. That way it doesn't take uh, so long to do. And then you want to put the oil in the pan because that's going to help keep the butter from burning because this thing's going to get super hot. You want a really hot pan and you're going to cook this fish like um, two, three minutes on each side. That's it. It's very thin. It doesn't take long. The trout uh, fillets are the thickest we have and they're not going to take that long. I just chest it and see how far it's sizzling. And the reason we use cast iron is because it heats up uniformly all the way around the whole pan. It doesn't get a little hot spot and it's flat on the bottom so you don't get that rolling effect from a pan that uh, is warped. So it all, all goes good. We're going to turn the heat up a little bit. I've got it on between five and six on my stove that's pretty hot. Your stove you're going to have to adjust to whatever your stove is. If your stove is really hot, then of course a lower number. You don't ever want to cook it on high. Okay, it's starting to smoke, so we're going to put some butter in there right now. In the oil. Then we're going to go ahead and just put our fish right in that butter and oil. We got it turned up to like I've got it on eight right now. And it's not gonna take long. Alright, let you watch that cook a minute. Okay guys, we're gonna take over. I'm gonna flip that fish over. Let's see the color. 
I'll give it a color on that. take the trout out because that's pretty thin I mean that's the mackerel the trout we're gonna let we're gonna turn it over one more time because it's a little thicker want to make sure we get that cooked really well now we're just gonna add the other mackerel in the pan that we had Add a stick of butter to there, another piece of butter. When we get that out, I'm going to show you how to plate this up. Let me just taste this real quick. This is the trout. You can see nice white flaky meat. Give it a shot. Mmm. Mmm. Man, that is good. That is so good. Okay. So let me show you how to plate this. and we're going to put some potato salad on that plate. All right, we're going to get one of our rolls. We're going to put a, a nice big hunk of fish right on there. Maybe even put another piece on there. We got fresh green leaf lettuce that we're going to put on there. We got fresh tomato. All right, guys, then we're going to just take our dill sauce that we made and we're going to put it right on there. And there you have it, fresh caught trout right out of the Crystal River on the flat by Gomez Rock, homemade potato salad, doesn't get any better than this guys. Okay guys, we we're going to end that video, hope you liked the video, if you did give it a thumbs up, it really helps out the channel, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and go on my playlist, I have some after the catch. Uh, other menus and recipes that I've done that are really good. So if you like this one, definitely go check those out and try it out. So we're hungry. We're going to stop and eat. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one.